Okay, so today I'm going to look at the Moving Motion Capture Tracker. Um, this was sent uh, over to us by the guys over at Moving 3D uh, to just test out and have a go out and see what we think. And I'm really impressed. Uh, it's a single camera, um, a single LiDAR camera. Uh, there's no need for any mocap suits or anything like that. Um, it just set up in a space and do some motion capture. So I'm just going to uh, run through the setup. This is uh, basically to set this up, take out the box, plug it in through an Ethernet cable, plug the power in. You basically need to make sure it's, I think it's 180 centimeters high. So you need to have a tripod. And that's pretty much your setup. Like, <laughs> that's it. Put it in, set it up, and then you're on to the next step, which is this. Um, so here you go, connecting. And then we can check connection. It's connected. So now it's going to um, help you set up the room. So because it's using a LiDAR camera, it's basically 3D scanning the room. So you need to move anything that's going to get in the way, any objects out of the space. I have the worst space possible for this because I've got an extremely small office. I have got a bigger space that I, I can use. But I thought, actually, let's show it in the worst conditions to see how the tracking looks. And um, it works really well. So basically, if you've got a bigger space, great. Um, but you basically need to, let's put it in, make sure there's nothing in its way. So let's just see you have set that up. So you can see here, you've got a five meter by five meter space. I've shrunk it right down to, um, basically a meter. I'm sat in, in the way of it at the moment. So I'm going to move my chair out of the way and I'm going to stand out of the way of this. But as you can see, if I start moving this, out you can see like where my office space is too big so basically what we do is if you've got a bigger space you wouldn't need to come in so close but I'm just going to bring it right in all the way that's the door I'm going to bring the height down and then we go on to so and next Okay, so the next step is we're going to calibrate the character. So, as you can see, that's calibrated and set up. Um, one limitation with this, um, and apparently it's something that they're working on, is once you leave the space, so now if I want to come to my computer to sit down, it's going to keep asking it to go back to the calibration uh, mode, which means you can't do anything with the settings, so it'd be nice if you could probably lock, you know, just lock where that is. Or just be able to um, adjust the settings and come back. But I'll just do a quick run through of the settings. If I stay within the space, so actually it's... Okay, I'm going to save the space and I have to lean over. And um, then let's just have a quick look here. Um, so we've got, obviously, our uh, calibration set up. Um, you can name your actor and save it, things like that. We've got retargeting. So this is really cool. You can import your own character. I'm not going to go through this at the moment, but I have tested this out and it does work really well. Um, you can basically bring your own character in and retarget it in here. Streaming, standard stuff. Uh, we've got Unreal, Notch, Oradu, and Unity. Uh, we've been working with Unreal. I believe that uh, Oradu and... I don't know if I'm saying that right, but... Borodu and V uh, Tube Studio, I think, on the the free startup software, you get unlimited streaming with that, which is really cool. Um, and you can obviously stream body and hands. And then additional, we can plug in a third party uh, hand tracking, like the Rococo or the Minus gloves. And I've tested this out with the Rococo gloves, and it works really well. It's super easy to set up as well. Um, another cool feature they've got in here as well is the control offset. This allows you to adjust the tracking of the character. As I said, this if it was two people, it'd be a lot easier. Or if we could um, save the pose and then come back and then work on the character, that'd be quite handy. So um, it'd be really cool if that's something that's added in. But having this in here at this stage is really nice. Uh, to be able to do it uh, before it gets streamed to something like Unreal. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's it. It's um, If you had something like this set up, you could have it set up all the time. Just switch it on, calibrate your character, and away you go. And as you can see, the tracking is really impressive, uh, especially for a single camera. And also, the foot sliding is really good. Uh, one of the biggest things yeah, here we have a lot of issue with is uh, foot placement. And this does a really good job at picking up where the feet are. Okay, so now I'm just going to show how easy it is to add to a metahuman. And it's the same process for any character, really. So, um, first of all, you need to uh, add the plugin to your project. So, it's the usual way of copying that into your plugin, plugins folder. I'm not going to go into that because it's pretty straightforward. I uh, just wanted to show what we can do with a metahuman. So, if we select a metahuman, uh, I'll we'll just pick a random one. that. I'm going to connect it to my iPhone. Testing the one, two. And then we need to add on the retargeting component. So it's literally select the, select the metahuman Add retargeting component, so type in target. Then we need to let's grab this out here a little bit. Oh, we also need to what do we do here? Okay, I forgot we also need to do, do, do. import the there's a FBX at the supply of the model, so we've imported that one into the scene. And then all we have to do is I'll set up a new file, do it again. Okay, let's do a folder. New SR. So we drop the FBX of this character uh, that they'll supply to you into Unreal. We want to retarget the animations, select the body of the metahuman so basically we go into the metahuman and we go to body we can see which one it's using actually if we go to this is one here m medium and if we go back to the targeting got that selected we can Add that one in there, and then all we need to do is export retargeted assets to wherever it is that we want to save them. So I have those ones in moving 3D, moving man, and new matter. Export that, and that's all we need. So in here, what we also need to do is bring the moving. Man into the scene. I'm just going to put him out the way somewhere. This isn't a proper tutorial, by the way. This is just me showing uh, quickly how it is, how it's set up. Um, yeah, I would normally be a bit more in depth if I was making the tutorial, but still, I just wanted to show it. It's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, we've got so we go back to retargeting. Now, all we need to do is select the source skeleton component is. Uh, the moving one. I've actually got two in the scene now, so I'll just set the first one. Uh, and then we want to make sure that that's controlling just the body and then the retarget asset. Um, we'll select that one. And then that's it. If we. Um, so if I press play. If I calibrate the character, so yeah, I mean, bit of a ropey explanation, but as you can see, it's a you know super quick to set this up. Um, nothing overly complicated, and then I think even with the, the way the retargeting component works, 
Um, you can go into that and make some adjustments to like shoulders and things in there as well. As well as going into um, the uh, tracking software for moving and making adjustments on that end as well. So, all in all, um, it is very impressive. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, thanks to the guys for sending it over and test, uh, giving us a chance to test it out. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. Like I said, we're always on the lookout for new mocap software. Um, you know, something that we're really interested in is the um, VTuber uh, virtual avatar presenter type setup. So anything that's easier for people just to jump in front and start acting and doing stuff, especially in real time. You know, we're always interested in seeing what's out there and what can be done. You know, this is uh, really good and. I know they're doing um, some promotions on this as well, so definitely worth checking out our website. Okay, as you can see, my office space is extremely small, um, which is probably the worst possible <laughs> setup for this. But even though it still does a really good job, uh, which is actually really impressive. So I'm just gonna calibrate character you can see here we are with the metahuman um we've got no hand tracking apparently finger tracking is coming soon there's some um videos on their social media channels showing some finger tracking which is really impressive i have tested this out using the prococo gloves and that worked extremely well as well um so yeah um and as you can see as well i've got uh, the head mount on and i'm using uh the iphone for facial tracking um you could set up a mount somewhere so that you can um, get some Head movement from the uh, from the camera. Obviously, it won't pick up head movement while this is on. And yeah, let's just test it out. So, as you can see from the uh, moving software, that that little green box is like my area of room. It goes up to five meters square, so you could get a lot of space in if you have it. Um, and let's just test some things out. So we turn around. So bear in mind, this is just a single camera, uh, a single uh, LiDAR camera. Um, it does a really good job at getting turn around movement. Um, this is probably not picking up my head as much because the apex of my roof here. So I've had to kind of lower the camera down. When you do the setup, you have to, um, as I showed, uh, block out anything that's um, in its path. So. Um, probably not getting the best tracking for the head anyway. Um, but yeah, as you can see, if we crouch down, I could even, as long as I stay in the screen space, we're getting some really good tracking. So next I'm going to show you a character create four model. Um, so that's, uh, using a character exported direct from character create four and using the same setup, just using the retargeting. Uh, component we can plug in, move in, 3D. Okay, so here's another character I thought I'd test out. Um, one that we've used before uh, with the uh, XN suit and the Rococo suit. Um, and as you can see, this is um, a non meta human character and it's set up in the exact same way uh, with the retargeting method. And it tracks extremely nicely. Testing. One, two. So, as you can see again, the tracking is working really nicely. Uh, very simple to set up. Uh, very nice tracking. Um, the guys from uh, Moving 3D says they're also thinking about making a more lightweight version for VTubers as well. Um, I think this is a more pro setup. That they're going for, but I imagine the tracking and stuff should be just as good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they come out with. But I wanted to make this video just show you what it can do. Um, one of my favorite things about this is the ease of setup. Um, once you get space set up for this, it says you just turn it on and away you go. So, um, and no need to put on a mocap suit. So that's a bonus, especially when it's in hot weather and you're doing a lot of movement. So yeah, it's very cool, and we'll definitely be uh, doing some more tests. So yeah, we think this is really cool, and looking forward to seeing what they come up with, especially when it comes to finger tracking, um, and some of the other features that they've mentioned as well for, um, they've talked about 
masking uh, areas out to make the room tracking and everything a little bit more easier to set up. So um, it'd be great to see what they come with. So I'd recommend keeping an eye on their socials just to see uh, what new updates they are sharing. So yeah, um, overall, I think um, the tracking works really well. Uh, the ease of setup is extremely good. Uh, definitely worth checking out their website. And uh, I know they've got some offers on at the moment. So yeah, if it's something you're interested in, check it out.